Hi, my name is Rick Berger. I'm with KIS Systems. And today we're going to talk about K QX List View. QX List View is a QT4 module that's usable by programmers to achieve active list functionality. It is an open source initiative. You can download source and the working demos at qxlistview.sourceforge.net. And finally, if you want more information on KIS Systems, go to www.kis-systems.com. Okay, first thing we're going, going to do is take a look at uh, our demo application here. And you can see that we've been running it a little bit already. And uh, basically what we have is we have a list view up in the top panel and down at the bottom we have a, um, a readout panel that basically just indicates that we've done something there. So, basically this looks like a tree view a QTree view and QX list view is derived from QTree view so we would expect to see this thing behave like your normal tree view the only difference is that we have these these columns these cells that are populated with things that look like widgets and in fact if we click on them they behave immediately like widgets here we have a bunch of checkboxes and this column we have radio buttons and lo and behold it behaves like radio buttons you might ask what do you need with that when you have a selection mechanism already and the answer is sometimes you need a secondary selection mechanism you might want to show a current item and some other item that might have a relationship to that and and whatever your application might require the next thing that we have over here is we have a toggle column it looks like a light bulb and in fact if we click on them then it turns the lights on and off. We have a little bit of uh, added behavior in this particular column. You can see that the parent item shows a partial state when not all of the light bulbs are turned on or off. So we can go through here and if we turn all of the light bulbs on then that, then that parent item state changes to reflect that all of them are on. When some of them are turned off, then it, it reflects that state through by dimming its by dimming its light bulb. We can also click on the parent to turn all of its children on or off. So that's a little bit of enhanced functionality. Also, up here we have some header behavior. The header will tell us what it's going to do next. Because sometimes you want to be able to turn everything off or turn everything on, depending on what this column might contain. So there we've toggled everything on, there we've toggled everything off and then we can go and resume our normal behavior. A column like this is suitable for things like visibility or illumination or whatever you know whatever makes sense to to uh, to toggle in your in your uh, in your model. And then finally we have something over here that looks like a push button. We push it and it behaves like a push button. And we might want to work on that one a little bit more to provide uh, again to provide a uh, more widgety looking uh, a more system specific widgety looking push button but you can see the basic ideas here so let's go back to our presentation for a moment so QX list view provides active list functionality and what that means is that the items consist of some cells that are active that is they respond immediately to clicks there is no multiple click required to bring up an editor to do the edit and then remove the editor. And finally, we want things to look and behave as system-specific widgets as much as possible, at least where we're using system-specific widgets. The goals and objectives for this were to provide an easy to construct, efficient mechanism to allow the target functionality to make it perform in Trolltech's initial target uh, excuse me, in Trolltech's initial model view presentation, they targeted 100,000 items. We've done the same thing here. I've run this with 100,000 items. It is a bit slow to load, uh, but once it's up, uh, you get the, essentially the same response that you see here. We need to provide a framework for extensibility. This is important because we know we're going to be adding functionality to it, and we need a good framework to do that. We want to preserve QTreeView's inherent functionality. Let me go back over and show this. Uh, one thing that QTreeView gives us and QAbstractItemListView gives us that we don't want to lose is this in-place editing capability. 
that's a real nice feature and we don't want to lose that. The other thing that we don't might not want to lose is column reordering. And so in fact if we bring this over here, hey looky there, uh, we can reorder columns at will. So we don't, don't want to lose any of that. Everything still works like it did. And of course uh, we can edit our header items here too. And typically when you do something like this, once you've clicked it away then all kinds of things would happen. Files would open, files would be renamed, or whatever this happens to point to. That's all dependent on your application, of course. But we preserved QS, uh, QTreeView's inherent functionality. We haven't gotten in the way at all, and we haven't overridden anything except where we need our specific functionality. And of course we want to work consistently on all platforms when Mac and X11 explicitly. It wouldn't be much of a QT application if it didn't do that. We can go over to Windows, for instance, and here we are running a Windows application, and hey, it looks just like a Windows application. And it behaves like a Windows application. We've also reordered our, uh, our columns in this, I see. Okay, and we'll go over to X11. Incidentally, we're running under VMware Fusion on the Mac here, and we're actually running three VMs simultaneously, and the system seems to be responding pretty well as long as we're not loading it up with too much process under the covers. So this works just as well on X11.